Christian morality, human life and human family. In the world where there is confusion, and a lot of it confusion to the extent that truth is doubted and falsehood celebrated, applauded. There is no doubt, my brothers and sisters, that efforts to defend and promote human life and family should be intensified in spite of all the obstacles and manipulations and all forms, especially lies. Aware of all that is happening in this time in history, we cannot close our eyes before an aggressive phenomenon opposed to life and family. As people of faith in Jesus Christ, we are called, all of us, we are called to uphold the Catholic doctrine on life and family, showing that the enemy of the truth is wrong. Today, today, more than ever before, this task is extremely difficult. This conference, therefore, is giving us an opportunity to sharpen and to strengthen our readiness to make defense to anyone who demands from us the reason for the hope we have. I'm grateful, very much, so very much grateful to know that during this, uh, this uh, conference there will be moments, of course, of prayer, moments to exchange uh, faith experiences of uh, our apostolate, and of course, moments to meditate the word of the Lord. The two readings uh, of the word that we have just uh, proclaimed, that have just been proclaimed, are presenting us ways that already now can nourish the hope and the faith that maintain us in our mission. Verse 28 to verse 31 of the 10th chapter of the book of Prophet Isaiah in the first reading have taken us back to the times when the chosen people were feeling the hardship, the hardship of exile in Babylon. These people were tired, tired, discouraged, and indeed they were in crisis of faith. Would they be pardoned? That's where the questions they should have been asking themselves. Was there any future for them? Would God fulfill his promises made it to Abraham and our ancestors there up to David? Would we keep these promises? The chosen people would be saved, really. Weariness and despair were reigning in their hearts. They were indeed fainting. Old and young alike were stumbling and falling. It is the prophet, prophet Isaiah, who would call them back to their senses. He invited them to know who their God was. In other words, the prophet asked them to stop drifting away from God and to stop losing sight of their God. Then the prophet told them that God of their ancestors was their loving, omnipotent creator. He could. And in fact, he was already operating in their liberation. But, but, 
in order not to stumble and fail, the chosen people had to deposit all their hope in God who could renew their strength. God who could make them so as on the wings of an eagle. God who never gets weary. God who never gets exhausted. As we celebrate this conference, therefore, we are invited to reinforce our confidence in God. We are invited to look to Him during these difficult times we are living through. He will strengthen us. He will renew us. Therefore, we cannot give up. And uh, indeed, we cannot yield to our fatigue. At the same time, we are inspired and strengthened by the fact that we are not on our own in carrying on this mission to defend life and family. Jesus Christ is with us. He's ever, ever, ever ready to supply us with what is needed in our mission. He is the vine, and we are the branches. He is therefore the supplier of strength. What is required of us, therefore, is that we abide in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. What is required of us is to be truly in communion with Him, because just as the branch cannot survive without the vine, we cannot, we cannot do nothing without Him. Being the mind, Jesus Christ is the source of our life. We who are the branches. Our relationship with Him is therefore essential for us to, to be productive and to succeed. Therefore, by our hope, totally, totally deposited in Him, we can rest assured that we will continue to defend and to spread His teaching and the teaching of the church that he himself founded. Yet, yet, our hope deposited in God and Christ's present readiness to supply us with all that is needed should not make us be passive, should not lead us to passivity, because even the branches of the vine are at work, and at work for a purpose to produce much. In other words, our hope in God and the abiding in Jesus Christ are an opportunity. They are an opportunity to bear fruit. In this conference, our bearing fruit will consist in recommitting ourselves to our mission to defend life, to defend family and all Christian values. Let us all heartedly receive the invitation of Jesus Christ who is telling us ask ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you let us also remember that he said that he is the one who takes the initiative in order to be do we did not choose him. That's told us. He's the one who chose us and he appointed us so that we might go and bear fruit and fruit that will last. Let us know, therefore, that our life is not all about what we do, but what but it is especially about what God can do in us and through us, and this gives us joy, indeed, hope. Let us open up our heart and be ready to be God's instruments in defending our faith, in defending life and family. May the company of his archangels and all the angels Marvelous that we are in the, in the church dedicated to St. Michael. 
may these angels and uh, their presence be felt, especially in these difficult times uh, as uh, we are moving forward in our life, in, just in our lifetime in history. May the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, intercede for the conference, for this conference, so that all the participants may grow, may they grow stronger and stronger in defending, in defending what right from the beginning the church has always believed and taught the matters of life and family. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.